Food. You need it to live, but the kind of food you eat is going to depend a lot on who you are as a person. And I don't mean personality-wise exactly, but rather the kind of taste buds you have. What is tasty to one person will be disgusting to another. That's just the way it works, sadly. But the irony is that we think more about the finished product than the route that it takes to get there. even if that route is rather unsatisfying. Here now are 20 foods you'll never buy again after knowing how they're made. Number 20. Bread I'm going to begin this one with something that we would bet a lot of you eat at some point during your day. Bread. You'll never eat this again after knowing how it's made. Bread isn't just something that you have for sandwiches. You can also make it into loaves and it can be eaten individually or even turned into crumbs for you to sprinkle on other foods. It's honestly a very typical kind of thing to eat multiple times within your week. But there are several ironies to this, not the least of which is that if you remember the food pyramid of what you're supposed to eat, bread was the most important thing and in large supply. But that's not exactly accurate at all. Part of the reason for that is if you were to look at all of the additives that are put into breads, especially those in the United States, you're going to see some things that are used in other products. But like what, you may ask? Well, yoga mats, pesticides, hair straighteners, explosives, and petroleum products. That doesn't sound very appetizing, now does it? The additives used in breads in places like the United States are done so for many reasons, not the least of which is whitening the bread, I could make a joke, but I won't, conditioning the dough to be better, and helping the dough to rise more naturally. But the twist is that tests have shown that these very agents can also lead to cancer, which is why many countries in Europe, as well as China, have straight up banned bread with these additives within them. So why does the United States still do it? Well, because the FDA says that these additives are generally recognized as safe. Oh, I feel so much better now. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Chickens and their eggs. This one you'll likely know something about, depending on how active you are on the internet or the certain kinds of shows that you may watch. The fact of the matter is that meat that we call chicken and the eggs that those animals produce are some of the most valuable and versatile kinds of food out there in the world today. Just think about it in terms of eggs. There are many ways you can cook them. And if you look at the recipes for meals that you make, an egg or two is often required for one reason or another. As for chicken, you can eat various parts of them in various ways, and chicken entrees are diversified in restaurants all over the world. But as you likely have heard, the treatment of chickens on the farms that grow them for the food industry are anything but grand. The chickens are often compacted into the tightest of spaces and just expected to live there until they're needed for further processing. And this is bad because that means that you have a lot of animals close together and that can breed bacteria which could lead to very harmful diseases within the meat itself. It should also be known that some factories actually plump up their chickens so that they can be flavorful for longer. But sadly, it does get worse. Many factories have been caught filling their chickens with foods and even drugs so that they'll be better in terms of quality of meat and their eggs. It's all rather disgusting, and that's why so many have been trying for a long time to try and clean up these places and get better practices in place. For the chickens and for us. Number 18. Apple juice. When you were a child, you likely preferred to drink one of a few kinds of juices. You probably had the packaged juice like High C or Capri Sun. You likely had grape juice, orange juice, and of course the trade classic apple juice. All of these were given to you because your parents were told by various others that they were healthy and that they would help you grow while also tasting good. In certain points of fact, that is true, but as we've learned in recent times, apple juice may not be as healthy as you think. That's because a study 
was conducted on apple juice and found that it has high enough levels of arsenic in it to cause serious potential health problems. Arsenic is a known poison, and yet it is also something that can be found naturally in the world today. And while the FDA does have methods to search for arsenic levels, it can be harmful even under the limits of their guidelines. Considering how apple juice is made and how much of it is consumed, It might honestly be a case of a little bit of poison per day, and that ends up hurting you in the long term. Now, in this case, I'm not saying that you should quit apple juice cold turkey, but having a look at the brands that you buy may help to indicate just how much arsenic is in the apple juice itself and whether or not you should avoid it. Number 17. Bread Again but surely, there isn't something even more harmful in our bread that we have had before. Well, that would have been a nice dream, now wouldn't it? The fact of the matter is, though, that things like bread have multiple processes that goes into it, and to do certain things to it, certain sacrifices must be made at the cost of you not really knowing what you're eating. Let me ask you this, how long do you think a loaf of bread could last on a shelf? The answer, not so ironically, is a long time. But that's both by natural intention and by design. It likely wouldn't surprise you to know that there's a natural chemical in the world that can help to keep things like bread stay good for a longer period of time, and you might even desire that to be used in other products when possible so the shelf life isn't ridiculously small. But what if I also told you that that product, it comes comes from human hair. l cystine is the chemical that's used to expand a bread's life, and it is indeed synthesized by using human hair as well as things like duck feathers and cow horns. Oh, and the hair itself comes from salons in China. The hair is dissolved in acid, and through chemical isolation, it is isolated, packed up, and shipped off to commercial bread producers. So I'm not lying when I say that you're eating hair, amongst other things, because that's one of the reasons you're even able to enjoy your bread for so long. Mmm, delicious. And speaking of delicious, number 16, Beaver Butt Ice Cream. Oh, maybe this is why Baskin Robbins only has 31 flavors. Because the 32nd was just not ready for the world to know about. All conspiracy theories aside, I promise you that the title of this entry is not a trick. Because to get the ice cream to the level that you love, some honestly use stuff that comes out of a beaver's butt. Beaver butts secrete a goo called castorium, which the animals use to mark their territory. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration lists this chemical as a generally regarded safe additive, and manufacturers have been using it extensively in perfume and foods for at least 80 years. So no matter how long you've been eating ice cream, you honestly been eating stuff from a beaver's butt. Mm. But wait, you say, I would have known that I was eating something like this from a beaver's butt. Surely, right? Well, here's the thing. The FDA is meant to protect you from bad food, and it certainly does that. But the twist here is they don't have to list everything or where it comes from as long as it's generally viewed as safe. something we've referenced already in this video, and as a result, most ingredient boxes will not list castorium, but rather say a uh, natural food flavoring, which is not a lie, but it's also not the full truth. What's also not a lie is that this stuff isn't only used in ice cream, but also pudding and other baking goods as well. So if you want to avoid eating stuff from a beaver's behind, you might want to look for food that has natural things like vanilla in it and not a substitute. Number 15, Mercury Tuna. No fun and games with this one because this could well and truly kill you if you're not careful. In addition to being a planet, it's also a substance in the world that if you get it on you or in you, you're very likely to die. And that is very bad, like full stop bad. It's no secret that tuna, like most fish and shellfish, contains toxic heavy metal mercury. The substance is often present in seawater in fairly small and benign doses before getting absorbed by algae and entering the food chain. But how much you'll actually find in each fish actually depends on the fish, their size, and their location, so it's hard to predict just how much 
is the danger at catching one of these. That means that eating things like canned tuna is all right, right? Well, yes and no. If you were to eat canned tuna right now, you'd 99 times out of 100 be fine, barring that the tuna was chopped up, had way high levels of mercury in it. But over time, if you were to be on a steady intake of canned tuna, that could change and not in the good way. Granted, even health officials admit that this is a very rare thing, even with those that do eat a lot of canned tuna and similar products. But the fact that it can happen at all is honestly kind of scary. And some of you out there might really like tuna and have multiple helpings of it a week, which obviously puts you in more danger than others. You don't have to stop eating it. It honestly can be healthy for you, but just be sure to do it in moderation. Number 14. Fish in your beer. Usually, if you hear someone say that their beer tastes watered down, it's because the person who poured it either has a bad batch or it's just not filled with the taste that they're used to. It happens, and that's not a crime or a health risk. But what may surprise you is that all beer is technically watered down because there are apparently pieces of fish in it. Specifically, and somewhat grossly, it's the bladder of a fish that's been used to help make beer better. Isinglass, a gelatin made using the organ is in fact very likely to be in your average pint. Used since the 19th century as a fining agent to make beer clear, bright, and more attractive to drinkers, the odorless added extra is used widely by brewers from mass-produced brands to small microbreweries. So it's not just a specific drink that uses the technique, it's quite a bit of them. And that means that if you've drank a beer in the recent past, you probably have essence of bladder within you. And here's where the other twists come in. First and foremost, the use of gelatin is purely for aesthetics. No, really, according to most, using this product actually takes away the taste of the beer. Brewers at times are more worried about having a good looking beer than a good tasting one, hence the fish bladder. Secondly, and arguably most important, if you're a vegetarian, that means that when you drink a beer, you're eating meat. Not something that you want to hear when you preach being a vegetarian and believe you've adhered to your diet. But if you drink your beer, well, you may not be. Number 13. Coal Tar Dye that just kind of sounds disgusting, doesn't it? Tar is one of those products that you know to avoid because it's going to hurt you and burn you in significant amounts, and coal is something that we used to rely on for power, but we know that it can kill us if it's inhaled. So the idea of you ingesting it, well, that's obviously ludicrous, right? Well, coal tar dyes are artificial coloring agents made by combining various aromatic hydrocarbons, and they're obtained from the distillation of bituminous coal. coal Coal tar is amongst the byproducts when coal is carbonized to make coke or gasified to make coal gas. Food companies have been all too happy to use this in their products, which includes putting it in things that you'd likely not expect, like butter and candy. Now, technically speaking, this product for coloring was actually less harmful than others that were being used when it was created, but that still means that we're extracting and using tar and coal in order to make our food better, and that's a little bit disgusting. Are you in danger health-wise if you eat products that feature it? Well, no. Based on most accounts, the extract is so low that you can't even taste it, let alone have it go and hurt you. But many have been hurt and even gotten cancer through the process of getting these coal tar dyes out there into the world. There was a time when the industry actually weaned off of them and were using more petroleum-based products, but now they seem to be enjoying the coal tar dyes again. Number 12. Bug dye. Now I'll ask you a very basic question. How many of you need that cup of coffee in the morning? Specifically, how many of you go to a place like Starbucks so you can shelve out $20 for a cup of coffee? If you're indeed one of those people, I honestly have some really bad news for you because Starbucks has a little bit of a secret ingredient that isn't so secret anymore in order to get some of their coffees to a certain level. And that ingredient, well, it's bugs. It's true, for the longest of times, companies like Starbucks have used a bug 
oriented product to color their drinks. Specifically, the company used cochineal, the red juice that a tiny white bug with a really weird name exudes when crushed to color certain food and drinks. So they literally catch the bugs and then they crush them to get a product that they use to dye their products. And naturally, they <laughs> didn't tell anyone about it until they were straight up caught red-handed. Get it? Red-handed? Red dye? Now as for whether or not it's harmful to you, well, it's not. Many survivalists will tell you that many insects are actually healthy for you to consume, and they technically are. The catch though is that people don't want to eat insects when they're drinking their coffee. Another way to look at this is the fact that Starbucks was doing this under the nose of the customer, and some people don't like to eat animals of any kind, and so them doing this was unfair to those with specific diets and beliefs. Yes, Starbucks did eventually change the product so that it wouldn't have the bugs, but you just have to wonder if they're still actually in there crawling around. Oh, that cup of coffee still sounds delicious, doesn't it? <laughs> Number 11. McNuggets Upon hearing what I'm about to talk about at McDonald's, you might say, it's fast food. I don't want to go there to eat healthy stuff. I go there to eat the good stuff. Well, I don't mind you saying that. In fact, not at all. But the fact remains that there are some parts of the McDonald's menu that you'll likely need to be a bit more cautious about. And one of them are the famous McNuggets. Because you might have heard the infamous pink slime meat that still persists to this day. But the truth though, is that it's quite a process to make these things. To start with, a team of workers carefully portion out a whole chicken carcasses along a production line. The crew separates the breasts, the small piece of rib meat, and the skin. And then the meat is grinded down so that it can be easily shaped. The mixture is then marinated in a delicious combination of salt, natural flavoring, remember that from the beaver butt, and dextrose, among other things. After seasoning, the nuggets finally take their shape. A special machine forms the mixture into one of four unique shapes, the ball, the bell, the boot, and the bow tie. Eventually, they make their way to the stores where they're then cooked up for anyone who orders them. So, do you need to fear the McNuggets? Well, probably not, but it doesn't hurt to know that sometimes there's a lot that goes into the fast, fresh food that you get at a place like McDonald's. Number 10. Peanut Butter now, I'll fully admit that this is one that's a bit more rare than you would expect, but if you look at it from an overarching perspective, the fact that it happens at all is just bad. Because you may have heard stories of people finding things in their peanut butter jars, and that is 100% a fact. People have found things like rat hairs to insect parts within their peanut butter, and that's not appetizing in the slightest. But how in the world do they actually get in there? Well, do remember that peanuts, like many many other products are harvested in mass by a machine that's not always gentle. The bugs and the rats, well, they're sometimes caught up in the machines and are brought to where the peanuts are processed. Things do happen, and you might end up with a part or two in your peanut butter. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen, so make sure you keep an eye out. Number 9. Hot Dogs Ah, the age-old question of what exactly is in a hot dog. Because if you look at the ingredients list, you're not going to find the answers that you're likely expecting. For worse, and for much, much worse. Hot dogs are made of ground up and pureed animal flesh, usually from pigs, cows, or chickens, which makes you really wonder why we label them as hot dogs in the first place. Oh, but it does get worse, because according to one official listing of what they're made of, it's literally the bits that remain. The raw meat materials used for pre-cooked cooked products like hot dogs are muscle trimmings, fatty tissues, head meat, animal feet, animal skin, blood, liver, and other slaughter byproducts. That doesn't sound appetizing at all, now does it? Number 8. Blue Cheese Personally, I prefer my cheese to be yellow in coloring, but blue cheese is something that many of you out there love to eat. I'm sure some of you count yourselves in that number. Part of the process for making blue cheese is the same as any other cheeses, but then you get to where they add in penicillin. The cheese's signature blue veins are created during the early aging stage, when the cheese is spiked with stainless steel rods to let oxygen circulate and encourage the growth of mold. It's also referred to as needling 
cooling, this process softens the texture and develops the cheese's distinctive blue flavor. So yeah, there's actually mold that's put into cheese and then it's rammed with steel spikes in order to let it grow. You can eventually get the blue cheese look and taste that you want after that. Mm, enjoy. Number seven, bacon. Bacon is made from pigs and there's nothing wrong with that, you might cry out in your fury as you bite down on a piece of bacon that you just happen to have next to you and I'm so very jealous about. First of all, why do you have bacon so close to you right now? And secondly, on the whole, bacon is fine outside of the natural, it's not exactly healthy in terms of things like additives and such, but the real trick here is that you need to be mindful of what kind of bacon you get as that can potentially lead to major health risks. As some of said that things like uncured bacon can lead to having cancer due to some of the things that are in the bacon itself. So just be careful about what kind of bacon you're eating and enjoy all that delicious goodness for me. Number six, gummy candies. This one goes out to all of you children, teens, and young adults who can't help but want to try out the best of the best in terms of gummies because they're a simple and delicious snack that can't possibly do more than rot out your teeth, right? Well, sure, if you're not a vegetarian, that is. Gelatin, the star ingredient in Jello and other wobbling desserts like gummy candies, is apparently made from pig skin, cattle bones, and cattle hide. Yes, apparently a process is used to whittle it down until it's gelatin. That means means that if you're someone who's vegan or vegetarian, you now cannot eat any of these products, no matter how delicious they may seem. I'm sorry, them's the breaks. Number five, Worcestershire sauce. Behold, a food that is both very grand to some and yet incredibly hard to say for most. I mean, how do you even pronounce it, let alone try to spell it? I feel bad for any child at the spelling bee that gets this word. The reason that I have it here on this list, though, is that most people don't know that Worcestershire sauce is a fermented condiment that's made from a base of vinegar and flavored with anchovies, molasses, tamarind, onion, garlic, and other seasons. Now, the flavor is savory and sweet with a distinct tang that's provided by the vinegar. So because it's made partially of fish, some people have had an issue with it as they don't advertise that the fish is in there, even though it absolutely is. Though it should be noted that some brands do put a label noting the fish, but would you really know what the label looks like without it being explained to you? Number four, Pringles. Once you pop, the fun don't stop, but doesn't it though? You know, when you have trouble reaching for the bottom tier of the chips without causing a mess, or when the when the thing is, you know, empty, or your arm is stuck in there. Philosophical questions aside, what could be so bad about Pringles that it gets them on this list? Are you actually eating chips when you're having Pringles? Well, instead of shaving bits off of a potato and deep frying it, the company begins with a slurry of rice, wheat, corn, and potato flakes and then presses them into shape. So these potato chips aren't really a potato at all. The snack dough is then rolled out like a sheet of ultra thin cookie dough and cut into chip cookies by a machine. Yes, everything you know about chips is a lie. Number three, grated Parmesan. Grated Parmesan is something that you shouldn't be able to mess up. It's a cheese that you make smaller. How simple is that to you people? Except for some brands, well, they've fed you wood for decades. Not 100% wood, to be clear. Even us humans have been able to do that. But in terms of their various numbers and numerous claims that they serve 100% cheese in their Parmesan, well, that's a lie. In fact, for the head of Kraft, one of the most respected brands at the time when it came to cheese, they not only face lawsuits about it, they went to jail for over a year because of the falsehoods that were refused to be admitted. Is the grated Parmesan now 100% cheese? Well, you'll have to try it for yourself and find out. Number two, canned mushrooms. This is one that's similar to the peanut butter entry from earlier, mainly because about how canned mushrooms sometimes have some unexpected guests in the cans if you're unlucky. Specifically, they can sometimes have maggots. 
Yes, for real, the Food and Drug Administration actually allows up to 19 maggots and 74 mites in every three and a half ounce can of mushrooms before they act on behalf of our food safety. So thus, even if it's 18 maggots in the mushrooms, well, you'll be fed it by the FDA. Now true, the maggots aren't harmful to you, but the gross meter is through the roof on this one. Who wants to have maggots with their meal? Number one ice cream. Now this one's an all-time classic that is still being used to this day, and it's honestly rather shocking that the makers get away with it. So if you were to go into an ice cream aisle in a store and get a name brand ice cream carton, you'd be able to go right home and eat it without any waiting for it to soften, right? But if you go to a mom and pop shop and get a tub of ice cream, you'd have to set it on the counter and go do other things like watch one of these videos. What's the deal here? Well, it all has to do with what's inside of that ice cream. The homemade ice cream has all the natural ingredients you'd expect and only the basic kind of additives to bring out the flavor. But for the name brand versions, they add in a special something to prevent overall freezing. You know, as in antifreeze? Yes, really. Like the thing that's in your car to prevent freezing in the winter, they use that very thing in ice cream to keep it from having a long waiting period to eat. The FDA does know about it, and it's generally accepted as safe, and as such, they do absolutely nothing. So the next time that you go to get some ice cream, just uh, go for the homemade kind. That's all from the realm of food and how it's made. Are you shocked at some of these revelations about how food is processed and created? And which of these foods are you now hesitant to eat during your daily meals? What other foods have bad creation methods that should have been put on this list? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.